everyone, my name is Dylan Malott and today we're going to go over a Substance Painter Crash Course. Um, we're going to talk about the UI, uh, go over the materials, um, look, take a look at uh, some layer structure for working in Painter, um, talk about the particle brushes, and just some uh, general painting tips um, when working within the software package. Um, this video is not going to go over some of the more intricate features of Substance Painter, such as like smart materials and uh, things in that ballpark. Um, for that, I really recommend checking out the Allegra Rhythmic YouTube channel. Uh, Wes McDermott does an awesome job of uh, looking at the uh, more intense features of Painter. Uh, this is going to be more for people who just want to jump in the software, uh, get their hands dirty, um, and get working within the package as quickly as possible. So, with that being said, uh, let's get started here. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, close out of this so we can start fresh and go from there. So, let's boot up Painter. And there we go. Okay, and this is typically what your screen is going to look like the first time you start up Substance Painter. Um, we got this little dialog box, and you can see when I come up here and I clicked File New or Control N. Um, it gives you a menu here to insert a mesh, uh, set your normal map format, whether you're OpenGL or DirectX, um, document resolution, um, and add your any pre-baked maps um, that you had done outside of Substance Painter. Um, and we're going to set ours to 2048 for now. And keep in mind that the, the document resolution you set here doesn't really matter right off the bat because um, you can upscale and downscale dynamically within Painter. Um, so, let's navigate to our mesh here, and I have my game mesh of that gun. I just head up, and I had a null map pre-baked, and you can see also I have an AO and a curve. Um, I baked those out of uh, Substance Designer, but we're going to go over how to bake them out in Substance Painter. It's pretty much the exact same workflow. Um, so I'm just going to grab my normal map, and I'm going to go ahead and just hit OK. And here you can see that it brought my gun in, and we have an environment map in the background. We can move around, which is awesome. So uh, control, or rather alt, excuse me, alt left click will control your uh, rotation. Uh, alt right click will control your zoom. And alt pan, of course, uh, is, our alt middle mouse is pan, of course. So um, if you want to rotate your light, you can hold down shift, right click, and that will rotate your lighting. So let's go here. And uh, let's just start up here in the top left hand corner. We'll go over some of our uh, paint brushes and so on and so forth. So we, up here we have our and our tool commands. We have our paint. We have our we have our eraser. Um, this is projection, geometry decal. More on these two later. Uh, these are when we start getting into um, selecting UV islands for our materials. Our material picker, which is super cool, it works just like the color picker in Photoshop, but this will grab your material properties as well. It's super, super helpful. I use it a lot. Um, here we have our symmetry, our mirror X, Y, and Z, uh, 3D only view, and our constrained, our constrained rotation. And this is our lazy mouse. Um, up here we can take a look at our file settings. Um, here you can, you know, your standard, standard, any package for the most part, any software package. For, um, open, save, so on and so forth. Um, and we want to take a look. You can import your custom particles and substances, export all your channels. Uh, we will want to do that when we um, are done painting and we want to send our stuff out to like Marmoset or Photoshop for any adjustments or anything like that. Um, so this one is important Imp import image in project. Uh, this is something that most people are going to use fairly often. It allows you to bring in an image from outside of Substance Painter into the scene. So whether you're bringing in an environment map um, that you want to put in the background to test some renders, whether you're bringing in a custom alpha you made in Photoshop, um, there's a lot of different things that you can use for that, and I use it fairly often. Uh, so that's where that's located. If you want to import an image from outside of the software into the software, this is where you'll go. Next we go to edit and we can see our project configuration. And this is one of the really cool features about uh, Substance Painter. Um, if you let's say that you're working in a software package and you have and you're then you export it here into Substance Painter and you have for some reason you have to go back and adjust your original mesh that you imported. 
um, you know you have to add something or change your UVs or whatever uh, what you can do is import your new FBX that, with your adjusted UVs for example and uh, you can just hit OK and it will recompute all the detail that you have spent so far so um, it's a really big time saver um, it's super helpful um, it's really a good non-destructive workflow if you need to uh, go back and edit something it's, you don't have to restart your texture all from scratch it's, it's awesome um, next settings and you know these are shortcuts and general things you can take a look at that if you please um, up here in your view uh, you can go ahead and, and reset your UI, take a look at any toolbars that may or may not be missing. So if there's something here that uh, is off or you hit a hotkey or something and something disappears, you can come up to your view and you can see if it's unchecked or not. Help, uh, pretty straightforward uh, about the software, check for update, feedback, documentation, tutorials, that kind of thing. So moving forward here, um, let's take a look at the undo stack. This is, this is a pretty cool feature. Um, so if I... Let's just rule it really quickly. I'm just gonna come in here. And I'm just gonna grab, you know, something, something quick. Uh, so you can see that as I'm left clicking and painting on here, uh, it's calculating those strokes that I'm putting on. So I can go back here at any point and uh, click one of these. So it's a, it's really cool, like a undo history kind of thing. You can think of it as. So. Uh, let's take a look here at our texture set. Let's go ahead and click that, bring it back up. Um, and this is what I was talking about when you can dynamically upscale and downscale your texture. Um, right here, um, you can just set you know any of these texture map resolutions you want, and Substance Painter will uh, automatically calculate for it. And I'll show you some of that later. Um, typically, what I'll do is I'll keep this uh, at 1024 when I'm working, because when you start layering materials and effects and so on, um, it can kind of chug. So I'll lower it to 1024 to work, and then when I want to see how it'll look when I take it to like game res version, I'll bump it up to 2048 and then back down to keep working. Um, here is where you can add channels. So if you want to come in and add like a normal channel, I'm um, an opacity, specular, um, ambient occlusion, uh, emissive, that kind of thing, um, you can come in and just click this little check, and you can add yourself another channel layer here. Um, and this is where there's a little bit of prep work involved um, before you get started painting. You want a ambient occlusion map and a curvature map alongside your normal map when you're working within Substance Painter because a lot of the generator effects that we're going to go over um, for like procedural weathering detail and uh, dirt effects and that kind of thing, um, they depend on your ambient occlusion and your curvature map. So you definitely want to have those if you plan on using generators. So, I'm just going to show you how really quickly how uh, we can generate this. So I'm going to turn off all my other maps because I only want my image inclusion and my curvature map. And uh, you're going to see here that, so you're gonna, that they want you to put in a high definition mesh. So, you know, you would click this little uh, dialog there. It would bring up a box that would let you select your high poly mesh. Um, you can pick your output size, so you'd set it to 2048 for example. And here are some additional settings that you can use if you please. Um, for the most part, I just import my mesh. It's just like baking in an X normal or max. Um, you just import your mesh. Your low poly is already in here. Um, and sometimes I'll turn on my anti-aliasing if I'm trying to uh, get a little bit better uh, resolution quality on my image. And for the most part, I just leave those as they are. And then you hit bake texture. And here are the maps that it kicked out for me when I did that and I'm gonna go ahead and import those images so here's my ambient occlusion and my uh, curvature map that I baked out and uh, to plug those in and to get our normal map to show up I'm sure you've noticed that uh, there's no normal map on here despite me uh, putting that in when I loaded my mesh to do that all you gotta do is come over here to your additional maps slots and you can see your normal map right there and there we go plugged it right in um, we got to do the same thing for our AO map and for our curvature map. So there we go. And uh, you can come down to your texture set. So if you're working with an object that has like a multi sub material or something when you export it um, out of your modeling package, uh, you can come down here and you'll, this is in your texture set, is where you'll see those individual materials. So you can switch back and forth between uh, these if you're trying to um, set up like a multi sub object or something like that. 
Next, then in our viewer settings, uh, we can change between solo, additional map, and material. Um, typically, I'll just keep it on material because we can cycle through these uh, just using hotkeys. Um, but I'll show you what they do. Um, so if I click on solo, I can come down here and I can cycle through my, you can see here in my top left, I can see base color, height, roughness, metallic, um, and so on and so forth. That is coming from the channels that I set up here in my channels palette. So, um, you can really just cycle through those in the viewport by hitting the C key, and if you want to go back to your full PBR material, you hit M on the keyboard. Um, so those you can cycle through, but if you come down to the additional map, you can hit this little dialog box that says other, and you can just look at your AO map if you want, you can just look at your curvature map if you want, and uh, just your normal map. So uh, sometimes that's pretty cool to get an idea of like if you, how your um, AO and your curve map bake came out of designer or painter um, you can get in here and you can take a look and see uh, you know where your edge where your edges are highlighted or your how your AO looks um, so that might be helpful um, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna hit M on my keyboard or we can go back into this mode and we can just pick material and here we have our shader settings um, here is your this should be default PBR um, here we have uh, PBR Metal Rough with Alpha Blending, um, Alpha Test, Pixelated, and Tune. So here are a couple different shaders you can play around with. If you're trying to do a PSC, you can use Alpha Blending and Alpha Test. Um, but PBR Metal Rough is uh, typically um, where I set mine and uh, where I'll be, what I'll be working with today. And here we can come in and set um, environment maps. So if you want to get a sense of like different lighting conditions, um, it works like it does in, in Mamasa tool bag. So um, typically when I'm starting, I'll find a lighting setup I like and I'll keep that one. And you can see that uh, we have like an environment and our environment map is showing us an image in the background. Um, sometimes for me personally, it gets a bit distracting um, having an image uh, with color in the background. Um, because you know, kind of can kind of conflict with what I'm trying to paint on here. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just grab this environment opacity, and typically I'll just slide it all the way down. I'll just I'll just shut it off. Your exposure um, works like how you might guess. Um, it can blow your uh, you know blow your image out or uh, fade it back. And I'll just typically leave that the same. Shadows, if you wish, you can see there that uh, we're getting some uh, shadows can come in here and set your settings um, for the shadow quality. Shader parameters, if you want to tighten up or uh, lower your AL. Height force, um, if you have a height map, um, this will allow you to uh, increase and decrease the intensity of it. Um, you can come in here and set the quality of your shader. Um, emissive intensity, so if you have an emissive map, you can highlight it or set it back, fade it back a bit. Stencil opacity, um, we're going to go over stencils later. And uh, I'll go over this feature when we, when we cross it. Wireframe opacity is uh, just like what you think it does. Um, we'll highlight and decrease your wireframe. Uh, you can see down here in the bottom left-hand corner, let me pull that box up a little bit, we have viewer settings and post effects. If I click on post effects and I activate post effects, um, this also works similar to like a, a package like a Marmoset tool Toolbag. You can get vignette, uh, lens distortion, anti-aliasing, that kind of thing. So if I'm if I'm trying to get an idea of like how my final render might work when I export it to like Keyshot or Marmoset tool Toolbag, for example, um, I can come in here and just sort of play around with my settings really quickly, and you know just get a sense of uh, how the final product might look. So that's that's those are some cool effects you can play around with to get a sense of uh, your final piece. And let's talk about the shelf. We're starting to get to uh, some of the stuff here where we can actually start to paint and see some really really cool features. So let's talk about the shelf here. Um, we have our alphas, procedurals, generators, textures, filters, um, so on and so forth. Um, there's a lot of different. Uh, um, you, I guess you would call them different. Uh, different groups of uh, images. Um, a lot of these procedurals and generators are from Substance Designer, so they're shared synonymously between the two pieces of software. But essentially this is where all of your images are, are housed, all your bitmaps and uh, any images that you bring in um, from outside. 
So let's talk about brushes, particles, and tools now. So this is where all your brushes will be housed. Um, you can see here in this uh, properties box, if I click between them, um, it's changing. So you, this is where you would select your individual brushes. Um, same deal for the particles, which we'll go over later. And particles will be a lot more impactful once we can uh, put them on our model and tools. So bullet impact, uh, they're kind of like stamps, frost, uh, metal stitching, which might be helpful if you're trying to make like a zipper or something. There is also the zipper tool, which might even be more helpful, um, and things like that. And here we have our materials, and you can see that there's a lot of them from here. You can import your custom materials if you wish, but um, a lot, of, you know, there's a, there's a lot of different uh, materials and leeway you can go with these. So um, you may not need to make custom materials depending on what you're trying to go for. Um, and smart materials, and this I would, this I we're not going to go into for the for the duration of this video. I really recommend checking out Allegorithmic's YouTube channel, uh, where Wes McDermott explains these more in depth. So we're getting to the end here of our user interface, and let's talk about the layer panel now. Um, let me get rid of these really quick. So when you start it up and you get a project in here, it'll it'll have a layer in by default. Um, and it's just a plain layer. There's no um, material detail there. There's no um, settings. It's just a plain, plain Photoshop layer. You could think of it as. Um, if we click this button, we can swap down between our um, channels that we set over here in our channel palette, um, and we also have add effects like generators, uh, configure mask, edit layer, add a layer, um, add a fill layer, um, smart materials. Um, folder and delete layer. Um, we are going to talk about full layers here in a second after we go over our uh, brush properties. So when I click a brush, I can come over down here to the bottom right, and you can see I have no material selected. So if I select a material, like we'll just pick this bigger brush, pick our pine. And make sure we're in the eraser settings. That's why nothing's showing up here because I have my eraser selected. So I can hit one on my keyboard, um, and uh, I can switch over here to my brush. And let's pick this really cool uh, fabric sweater material. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and left click, and you can see that I'm starting to paint here with that material. And if I want to change the size, you can see that uh, it dynamically shows you what the material is going to look like, uh, or what the brush is going to look like, rather, um, in this dialog box. So it's really helpful for getting an idea of what, uh, and, what and how your brush is going to paint. Um, if I click here, I, if I click this little, uh, little pencil icon, I can just type in a value. So if I don't want to use a slider, or if, or if I want a specific uh, kind of, if I want a specific numerical value, I can click that. To the right of that is this little uh, open circle that lets me use pen pressure or not. For the, for this demo, I'm just using my mouse and keyboard. Um, but uh, if you want to set pen pressure up, this is where you would set that setting. Um, and from there, we can change our flow, our spacing. These are these are very standard uh, settings for anybody who's ever worked in Photoshop. Um, set the angle of your brush, so on and so forth. Um, size jitter, flow jitter. Um, all of these are fairly straightforward uh, commands. Um, alignment we can go over later. This is going to play a part when we talk about um, painting UVs in Substance Painter. Um, Backface culling, um, size space. If you want to change your alpha for that brush. Um, you can have uh, Gaussian shape, or different, rather shape, different shapes rather. Um, hardness, if you want to set the hardness of your brush, we'll just see here that uh, gives us a different effect. We can set a stencil, and uh, we can also uh, choose not to paint a color when we paint that material on, or our height or roughness, metalness. That's one of the. That's another one of the awesome features of Substance Painter, is that you can choose which. Uh, channels to paint on and which to not include. Um, really, really handy. Um, so let's go ahead and turn our color back on. And here we can, if we scroll down a little bit more into our basic parameters, uh, this is where we can see the different parameters of the material itself. So this is going to change depending on which material you pick. And you can see that if I pick like cap, for example, it's going to give me a different set of sliders and a different set of parameters to change versus the uh, Fabrico 2. 
and I can change my colors and um, those sorts of things. So there we have some different effects. Now uh, that we've gone over the user interface and where everything's located, let's get into the nitty gritty here. Let's let's start painting in uh, Painter, learning about like layer structure, uh, workflow, pipeline, that sort of thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that layer. And I'm going to add a fill layer, which is right here. Um, it looks like a little coil. And uh, you can see that uh, it's just a gray material. There's nothing here, nothing selected. So I'm going to pick a brush. And I'm going to pick a material. And let's see here. I'm looking for a metal. So let's go to steel bumped. And let's see how that looks. Okay. We can, we can go with this. Um... And I'm just going to go ahead and name this Steel Bumped. Whoops. Steel Bumber. Uh, <laughs> All right. And uh, now I'm going to go in here. And I don't really like the way it's throwing this detail over over the piece. Uh, you know, you can see that uh, you got some scratches there. You got some dirt effects, and that's really cool. You know, I, I like that. But I, I want to go in here and I want to set it myself. I don't want it to look too too procedural, too uh, calculated. You know, I want to I want to go in here and hand place these scratches. So what I'll typically do is I'll just come in here to my advanced parameters that come with this uh, steel bump material, and I'll just turn my scratches down, and I'll do the same for the dirt, or I may increase it depending on how this how this looks. I think I'm, I think I'm going to keep the the dirt here, but maybe I'll turn it down a little bit, but. I do want some dirt on the metal to begin with. Um, so really, you can play around with the materials that you have and play around with their parameters and get something as a base that you like. In, in Painter, it's about getting really, really sharp, really, really awesome looking base materials and building on those from there. Um, very similar to, to Substance Designer. You break it down into... Um, basic parts and then you just build step by step from there so let's find I want a little bit of tint in my metal but not not so blue so there we go a little bit of off gray and here you can determine your roughness slider so if I turn it all the way up um, or turn it all the way down uh, you can see we get different effects if it's all the way down um, it's not rough and if it's all the way up it is rough so I'm going to go ahead and control Z, or alternatively come into my undo stack, change that value back um, to where it was by default. So there we have our steel bumped, and I want to go ahead and put another material on this, another fill layer. I'm, I'm thinking that uh, I want this steel bump material for the, for the silver tank and some of these other bits, but I want, as you can see when I first started, um, or when the video first started that I had some orange uh, paint kind of wear going up in here, some black pieces, some silver pieces. Uh, I want to make the color, color of this rail um, separate from the silver material. So I'm going to add another fill layer and you can see that it's all, it's, it's erased uh, the silver bump material I have here. It's, 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 uh, you can see if I go to the layer, it's on top of the steel bump. So how do we make it so that our materials um, can so that we can determine which materials show up on which materials don't um, where they come on to on certain parts so before we get into that let me just grab another material real quick sometimes I'll just like to um, f not worry about determining where it's going to be and just uh, throw it on here so I can get a greater sense of how the whole material looks and I do like this material it looks really cool so I'm going to turn down the dirt um, get rid of the surface imperfections because I don't like all those little bumps there. And I'm going to turn down the rust just a little bit, but I do like that color. And now we want to figure out how we can get our materials uh, on certain areas and how to not include them on others. So what we do is we come over to our layer, and let me just name this really quickly. Um, what's the name of this material? Steel. So, we're going to right click and we're going to add a black mask. And that's going to uh, bring back the steel bump material on there. 
because the mask is uh, completely black and it's wanting us now to determine where we want to have white areas where our material or steel material will come up. So what we do is we come over here to our geometry decal and in our where our brush properties were now we have a uh, try we have a try selector um, a quads um, this is elements and this is UV so since we're using a black mask we're going to want to turn our stuff to pure white to show where we want the areas to be highlighted or not and I'm just going to pick UV and if I hit uh, F1 on my keyboard um, it's going to bring up my 2D view if I hit F2 on my keyboard it's going to go back to 3D and if I hit F3 um, it's just going to bring up my 2D view and I'm going to bring up uh, just my I'm just going to bring up both here and now my wireframe is a little too sharp uh, I, I you know some areas it's a little tough to see especially if I look at my 2D view it's, it looks like a mess so what we can do is we can come back to our viewer settings change them from post effects when we were looking at those different vignettes and so on and I'm going to turn my wireframe opacity down in fact I'm just going to turn it off um, so let's go in here and let's pick which areas we want to be highlighted with that steel and which we don't so all I gotta do is just left click on the mesh where I want that to come up and it'll come up and sometimes uh, depending on how your UVs are laid out you can see here that I'm getting that seam there and there is one on the mesh um, and it's crossing over into that steel bump material rather than having the steel um, so then in this case I'll just pick the element and I'll just pick the entire thing um, and we'll just go from there so let me select a few of these pieces here and I'm just going to go back to 3D view for now um, that I want to be different material than that steel bump so let's see here let's grab these ones okay cool so the benefit of working with a fill layer versus one that you just grab uh, a regular layer and you paint the material in by hand the benefit of working with a fill layer is that you have all these parameters that you can go in and adjust see if you painted that on with just a layer you'd have to go back in there and repaint the color on or delete the, delete the layer um, with when you're working with fill layers you have all these settings on all these parameters that you, that you can change that are going to give you instantly um, the effect that you're looking for so I'm going to pick a little bit more of a blue metal for this because uh, it's looking kind of cool um, let's see how if I can get this roughness to change a little bit it's looking a little too shiny um, on that top metal so let's flatten that out a little bit and let's keep layering our materials here so um, let's go ahead and put um, let's get like let's get like a paint effect on top of on top of this. So typically, um, what I'll do is when I start to get layers, uh, fill layers and stuff coming out, I'll make a folder that houses all of the different layers I'm going to be layer layering over top of one another um, for a specific for a specific material. So I'll come in here and I'll just name this folder uh, steel. If I could spell here, I'll just name this steel. And I'll plug this in here. And um, what I'm going to want to do now is I will take this black mask. So I'll right click it. And I will hit um, copy mask. Let's see where it is. There we go. Copy mask. And I'll make another black mask here. And I'll paste it into the mask. And I'll remove this one. And I did that because if I have my mask over my folder, then I don't have to worry about going in and masking each fill layer off. I don't have to copy that mask anymore. I just I mask off on top of my folder where I'm going to house all of my uh, individual materials for that specific material. And um, I only have to do that once. See, if I, if I um, kept layering materials, I would have to keep copying, copying that mask and adjusting that mask and painting out different areas where I didn't want things and so on and so forth. If I just have it on my folder, then I only have to worry about it that one time. So, what I'm going to do now is add another fill layer, and let's look. F this is a little trick I picked up off of one of the logarithmic videos. Um, I'm going to come in here to my uniform plastic, and I'm going to try and get like a paint effect. So, what I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll, you know take a look at the color. Let's see, let's see what looks cool here. Let's go with red. So I'll come in here to my uh, 
roughness, and I'll adjust my roughness so I get something in the paint of vault, or in the something like paint. Um, and let's see here. Let's keep playing with my roughness a little bit. Paint's a little bit glossy sometimes, so I just want a little bit in there, but not too much. Okay. I think we'll keep keep that for now. It can look a little bit like plastic here, and maybe we'll need to dirty this up and get a little bit um, variation in here, but I think for now that's okay. So, what I can do now is I can come in and uh, let's say I have some scratch detail. I want to put some scratches, you know, and I want to damage this up, right? I'll come into my, I'll add another black mask, and I will, or rather, let me add a white mask, and I'll grab my brush or hit one on my keyboard. And now you can see when we're talk when we click on a um, a mask, we have a little grayscale slider here. And uh, if I want to highlight something, I'll turn it white. If I want to get rid of something, I'll turn it black. And I'm just gonna grab like uh, let's see here, let's grab how's that sandpaper look? Yeah, we'll go with sandpaper. Grab a sandpaper brush. I have my grayscale set to black because I'm using a white mask and I want to remove some of these parts so I'll paint it black and let's come in here and I'll just start to scratch this up a little bit you can see that uh, it's removing that layer of paint off of my mask and now I actually don't like how that steel is looking so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to bump it up to a lighter color just so you can see that shine come through you know that's a really nice effect so let me turn that up a little bit more okay now you can see here that uh, as I'm painting you know I'm getting this cool effect where it's like cutting with this paint I actually want to turn my hardness up a little bit so I can get some sharper and cleaner lines in the paint I don't want it to be too soft so you can see I'm getting this like really cool effect you know it's, it's painting out the uh, paint layer um, and exposing the steel beneath but my paint now it looks a little flat, like it, it doesn't look doesn't look believable. There's no normal detail there. Um, so what you can do is you can come over to your channels, and I'm gonna add a. Let's look for height. Or hmm. let's see. I'm gonna add a normal map. Uh, you're gonna want. It's gonna give you a box to uh, add normal map as a background, or do nothing. Um, it will create a fill layer with normal map loaded and its channel at the bottom of your current layer stack. And I'm gonna go ahead and click just once. And now that you can see that that gave me a normal channel to paint on. And if I come to my fill layer and I turn on my height, um, I also have a normal dialog box here that I can select to. And if I turn on my height, now I can now I, now I have a slider for height. Or I can set it back or I can push it up and I just want a little bit of height on my paint layer let's see here let's get something that looks I don't want it to look too too noisy too fake so maybe just a little bit of height so that solves our problem of our paint looking too flat um, when we were painting it out there it just uh, it didn't look very believable it looked um, much too flat uh, much too fake so I can keep grabbing different brushes here and I'm a big fan of scratch brushes I use those a lot um, those are really really nice brushes and let's see here let's find one that uh, gives us some nice detailing let's go with this one so you can come in here and you know just start to rough it up a little bit put some variation use your uh, X, Y, and Z sliders um, your hardness uh, let's change our flow here and our spacing so you can get a bunch of different effects really quickly just working with the base settings that are already in substance painter so let's just keep dirtying this up a little bit and now let's talk about particles so if I click my particles uh, group here I can come down and I want something like uh, let's grab heavy leaking um, I want something with some nice like shriek detail and I have my grayscale setting to black and I just grab my brush you can see that's giving me some physics effects and it's giving me a really cool look to it it looks like uh, something natural you know so if you have like uh, um, oil or dirt or anything like that 
um, the particle effect brush might be a good way to go about it rather than painting that in by hand and trying to get that effect um, letting the computer generate it and I can come in here and adjust my uh, settings very much very similar to adjusting my brush settings um, and you can see when I change these it will show you how it's going to look um, in the visualizer so I'm going to keep coming through here. I'm actually going to turn my hardness down a little bit and give myself a little bit more streaking effect here. So, just coming in and uh, roughing this piece up a little bit. Just giving it some general, you know, generic wear and tear detail for now. Just for the purpose of the demo. And, um... Let's see here. Let's go back to my brushes. I'm going to grab my dirt. And uh, now let's talk about uh, generators. So um, generators are applied to the mask of the object. And to apply a generator, we right-click. And uh, that brings up our box here. And you can see I was working with it earlier in the video. Um, you can add white mask, black mask, uh, add a bitmap mask, which is, would be an image that you bring in. Um, mask with color selection, uh, clear mask, remove mask. Um, I use fairly often to uh, clear a mask if I want to erase it. So if I duplicate a mask um, from one that's already pre-created, um, I want to clear it so that I can add new detail to it. Um, copy, cut, paste, you know, pretty standard commands for Photoshop. And here we have add generator, add fill, add levels, add filter, and add color selection. So we're going to add ourselves a generator, and these are driven by the um, curvature and aiming occlusion maps that we uh, computed earlier. And uh, you can see they're already plugged in here for me because they're, we set them in our additional map slots earlier in the video. So I have all these settings very, very, very akin to the settings I had in uh, just a general material. And really quickly, I can come in here and I can adjust these sliders and play around with these sliders until I find an effect that I like. So I'm going to come in here and just bang this up a little bit. You know, it kind of looks like it's been blasted by sand or something like that. Um, so you can come in and just very quickly play with these sliders. Get an idea of how weathering might play out. And how I'll typically use my generators is, is because... And, Sometimes when you're using the generators, you can get that you can get that fake look to it, right? It looks like it's been computed. It looks like it's uh, been generated by the computer. It doesn't look like uh, handmade, um, real detail. It can it just looks fake. So typically, what I'll do is I'll use a generator to give me a sense of where uh, dirt and weathering effects might locate themselves. So you know, it's, I'm getting some effects here towards the bottom of the handle where dirt's collecting, um, underneath the barrel. You know, it, it gives me a sense of where the detail is pulling um, for that particular effect. And I'll go in and I'll hand paint that myself. Or I'll use a mixture. I'll use, I'll um, come in here and I'll um, set my um, generator settings in here. And I'll then take this and I'll paint over top of that. Um, but you got to be careful that it does. you don't let the computer do too much for you um, to give yourself a fake, def a fake effect. Um, a really great feature that's coming in 1.4.1 uh, is Allegra Rhythmic is giving us the ability to paint um, on the generator itself. So if I wanted to come in here and remove this area um, in 1.4.1, I'm going to be able to add a paint effect on here, and I'm going to be able to go in and paint that out of my generator, which is going to be a super amazing feature. It's going to be really, really helpful. Um, so in that case, that would remove some of that uh, procedural fake, you know, computed effect um, that you can get from using generators sometimes. So that's going to be very, very powerful when that comes out in 1.4.1. Uh, so um, let me add another generator here just to get a different effect. And let's pick, like, edge detect. Or edge damages, rather. And let's see what we get here. I'm going to invert this. You can see that it's using the same. If I like take take note of where the detail is, is pulling here and being generated here, and if I come into my uh, material settings and I go to my additional map and I set it to curvature, you can see that it's in the same spot of where my curvature map is highlighted, which is one of the reasons we want to have a curvature map when we're trying to use these effects. 
because that's where the detail is going to, that's where the, the software is going to calculate that detailing at. So, um, let's go on here, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and play with these effects. If I can come down here, I, if I click on these settings, and you can see that there, you also have these effects for your um, different layers. You can set the opacity. Um, you can change your uh, layer blending mode. It's they're they're the exact same layer as this Photoshop. Um, and typically, what I'll do is I'll come in and I'll play with these effects. So if I don't like, you know, I and you can you can also start to blend effects. So underneath uh, blend generators, rather underneath here, I have that dripping rust that we had before. So if I want to if I want um, to keep some of this edge wear here, but also uh, keep that dripping rust, I might come in here and I might. Uh, multiply that, for example, or overlay it, and from there, I still have full control of that generator. So if it's if I want more edge wear, or if I want uh, less rust, I can come in and adjust those sliders. So one, really, really the powerful thing about um, Substance Painter is that you can come in here and you can set up your base materials. You can get um, everything at a basic level um, started. And then you can adjust them using sliders, uh, numerical value inputs, um, opacity sliders. So once you get everything set up, it's about layering. It's about having like really, really sweet, really, really cool base materials and layering uh, more materials on top of there and adjusting them using the sliders, using the opacity, using layer effects, using generators. Um, and typically that's how I'll go about it. So um, I'll, I'll just start at a basic level. I'll just start roughing out things, getting a sense of how the material reads, uh, collect reference um, of the real world material, and start layering effects from there. And um, hopefully this demo has been helpful. If anybody has any questions, um, please feel free to uh, hit me up on Twitter, um, reach out to me on Facebook, um, LinkedIn, YouTube comment, uh, anything like that. If you're curious about um, any of the process I went through for the... Uh, original piece so let me pull that back up really quick um, let's give that a second to load here it's taking a second it might have crashed we'll see it's acting like 3ds max right now so let's see if we'll pull through. I think it's just because it's a big file. Yeah, okay. So if anybody has any questions about um, any particular aspect of um, how I approach this piece, um, please feel free to reach out to me on any of the social media channels I'm on. I'm also on ArtStation. Um, and yeah, hopefully this video was uh, informative. Uh, hopefully you uh, learned some stuff from it. And uh, really it was geared for people who uh, just want to get their hands dirty. They, they want to see where um, all the basic settings are and just get moving within the software as quick as possible. So uh, again, my name was Dil Malott. And uh, I hope you enjoy your time within the awesome uh, Substance Painter package. Uh, take care.